Guys, welcome to the Bird Brain Podcast, where the goal is to rise above it all, stay elevated, create that infinity, and up your you. I'm your host, Isaiah, and today we are going to be talking about relationship envy. Um, you know, the grass is green on the other side, right? I think what I've understood and what I hear in the ethers, but also have experienced, is that there is this perception of singleness from people who are in relationships, and uh, sometimes vice versa, right? I want to be as impartial as possible, but... What I've understood is that when you're single, the implication is that you you have more time and you're not as, quote, quote, busy with your life as somebody who's in a relationship because they have a significant other or they have kids or whatever the case may be. So it's kind of like, you know, a lot of times people turn their nose up at single people or they just disregard people who are not in relationships because they don't have time, Right. So we're going to get into this because I think it's a very interesting thing. And I want to bring up something very important that may be missing from the conversation as a whole. Okay. So buckle up. If this hits you in your chest, (laughs) this is something to think about whichever side you exist on. And um, yeah, I'm gonna do my best to speak from my own experiences, but well, no, I'm gonna do my best to speak from my own experiences. Okay. So yeah, if you're at home, Find somewhere comfortable if you're driving, put on your seatbelt, get some water, and we're going to get into this. All right, stay tuned. So I'm going to read this quote to you. I wish we talked more about this. Being in your 20s, 30s, and single without a big friendship group, you have friends, but they're all in relationships, married, or have closer friends. No one messages or checks in regularly. You spend majority of your time alone, doing things solo, practicing self-care, which is great, but can also feel very isolated and lonely at times. And it was crazy because seeing that, I was like, oh, shit, that's interesting. And then seeing how many people could relate. You know, the funny thing is, as big as this world is and as as busy as we all claim to be, everybody's kind of on the same wavelength in terms of what they're feeling, right? And that's a very interesting uh, realization when it's all said and done. That is very interesting in terms of, you know, what our experiences are, our collective experiences, what, what it looks like, what it feels like. And it's just rare, I think, people talk about it because there's this fear of, What's what I'm looking for? This fear of embarrassment, this fear of seeming othered, right? Seeming like, oh, yeah, you're just whining and complaining and, you know, go out there and make friends. <laughs> you know, it's it's up to you to, to make friends, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes people will say that I, I pay attention to the people who have that dialogue and I ask myself, well, what kind of friend are they? And are they in a relationship? <laughs> because it's easy for somebody to tell somebody what to do and how to feel when they don't have to experience it, right? Oh, yeah, you should just do this or you should go do that. It's like, but I'm going to still go back home to my significant other because that occupies my time. I have somebody that I can go back to and I can go home to, right? There's comfort there. So I can kind of talk from my platform um, and still lack a level of empathy for you, right? We fail to realize, you know, the the isolation and loneliness that exists in this world isn't because a person's necessarily single. You could be in a relationship and be very alone, right? And then that kind of lets us know that relationships a lot of times are not about companionship and not about building each other. It's about having comfort and having a buffer and having a distraction from oneself, right? The need to attach versus the desire to connect. Ooh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the need to attach versus the desire to connect. And 
I just find it so funny in terms of like the dynamics between, you know, and th- this becomes a very heated conversation between people who are in relationships and people who are single. And it's like, if you're in a relationship and that's how you move or that's how you talk to people, don't forget you weren't, you didn't come into this life with a partner. You sought it out. You made it a point to have that partner that took active effort for you to have this relationship, right? That, that, that was something that you decided that you wanted to have. So you did it. And, you know, it's all fun and games until you get slapped in the face. And the idea that some people are afraid of being with themselves is something that I've also understood, too. And, um, you know, I think as... See, it's funny because when I'm in a relationship you wouldn't necessarily know it unless I told you <laughs> the reason why is because I don't change as a person. Um, I integrate all aspects of my life into the fold versus um, feel like I'm being pulled in every which way. And I think that's by design for me personally, right? Because I've talked about this before. My goal in my life is the relationships I have in my life are very intentional. They're not buffers. No one is insignificant in my life. If they're there, right? The room they take up is intentional room. I don't make space for things that I don't need or want. So therefore, any relationship that I have comes with a certain uh, territory, right? A certain level of intention, a certain grounding for, for myself, but also for the other person. Because I don't want to have a full plate to the point that I can't pay attention to the relationships that matter to me and they have to pick up the slack or the requirement is that they be more understanding of my neglect, right? They have to become more understanding of my neglect for the relationship to survive. It's like, no, absolutely not. I just learn how to prioritize and the way I think about, and, you know, even more to that point, the reason why I am so intentional about my relationships is because I recognize and understand, too, the people I have in my life, for the most part, the people that stick are people that are um, just as thoughtful, right? Just as thoughtful as I am. So therefore, my desire to make sure that that relationship stays healthy, which means that anybody who comes into my life, they have to have the same level of trajectory. Their moral compass has to be the same, what they value and everything like that in terms of people. Kind of has to be there because I'll be damned if you think that you are now going to control my entire life or you're going to tell me who my friend should be and all this other shit. Like, that's not happening. And my friends aren't going to do the same to them. It's more about we come to the middle because that's my family, right? I don't I don't really have a... Um, you know, I I find that, you know, when some people get into relationships, that becomes their whole identity. And it's like, well, screw my friends until my relationship goes sour. And to me, that's what I take personal offense to because it's like, okay, friendship does matter to you. It only matters when you need one. It doesn't matter to you to be one. And that's a problem, right? Because it lets us know that people are very aware a lot of times of getting their needs met. It's just that they're not willing to be of service to other people. And that's why I think, you know, a person that's single can still be very selfless, right? Single people are usually making time for the people that are in relationships, right? I'm making time. It's not that I have extra time. It's like I'm making time. And everybody's busy with what they're going to be busy with, right? Let's call it that. You know, you make time for what you want to make time for. And, uh you know, I, there were times I talked to my mom. I'm on the phone with her. She's like, are you bored? You know, do you ever get bored? I'm like, no, I always have something to do. And then sometimes she called me and be like, hey, um, let me call you back. I'm doing this, blah, 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 blah. I'll call you back when I'm finished. And then when I'm talking to her on the phone, I was like, all right, cool. Let me let you go because I got to go do this thing. Da, 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 da. She's like, every time I talk to you, you're always doing something. You always have something to do. And I'm like, yeah, Absolutely. And it's not me distracting myself from myself, obviously, because I spend a lot of time with Isaiah. It's me doing things that feel fulfilling. It's me making sure I check in on my relationships. It's me making sure I'm devoted 
as a person and the space that I take up in people's lives is is intentional, right? Being single or in a relationship, it, it doesn't matter because it doesn't really define who you are as a person. How you move within those spaces is is who you are, right? Selfish people are in relationships too. Like I said, sometimes it's not about connection, it's more about attachment. It's about getting your needs met versus how you're willing to provide in the relationship. What does this relationship do for me? Right. That's why some people are like, oh, yeah, this person doesn't make me happy. Well, do you make yourself happy? Right. What are you doing for yourself? Or did that all, you know, get thrown out the window when you got into a relationship? Because now this is your only your only this is your goal in life to have a relationship. And, you know, it's it's mixed. Right. Because there may be some single people who may have a perception of being in a relationship where it's like, oh, yeah, you you have it all. You're happy. You got everything you want. And it's like, well, sometimes people are in relationships and they're still very single. Still very single. And I've noticed it, Uh, you know, people talk, (laughs) you know, or just conversations or you could pay attention to body language. You can see how people interact with each other. Right. One is not necessarily a um, what's the word I'm looking for, not a byproduct, but one is not a, a substitute for the other, because, like I said, two selfish people could exist in a relationship. Okay, and they have each other for the sake of making sure they're not without. Right. And I think a lot of times if somebody never had the experience really being by themselves, they don't know what goes into that. Like if a person's single and let's say they're single, they don't really have family around, whatever the case may be. They have to look out for themselves. Right. And it's not just looking out for myself in a selfish way. I have to make sure I'm good. I have to make sure I'm healthy. If no one's checking in. Yeah, I got to make sure I get things done. Right. For me, I got to make sure that I'm okay. Like literally, okay. if something was to happen to me, who's around? No one. Right. And then someone says, well, that's your choice. Not necessarily, because truth be told, everybody that you come across is not necessarily willing to be an intentional person in their relationship. So it's not just about going out into the streets and picking somebody off the street and being like, hey, we're going to date or hey, we're going to be friends. A lot of people don't know how to be friends and a lot of people definitely don't know how to be healthy partners. So that's not the fix to being single, you know, and a lot of times people who are single may have decided I don't really want to be in a relationship anymore because I've had to heal from some things and not even heal from the previous relationship, but maybe heal from some familial trauma or maybe heal from some friendship trauma because that's a thing too, right? We have to be more mindful of the dialogue that we spew and, and the labels that we place on people or the identities that we give people without their permission in terms of what their life is like because they don't have other things in the way. It's like, no, look, if I'm single and I'm still making time for you, that means that I still care about this relationship. And this is a relationship that I'm still willing to invest in. You get me? Is not because I'm lonely. It's because, well, this relationship matters to me. And you have to, at the end of the day, whether you're single or you're in a relationship, you just have to find people who have a certain level of empathy, right? A certain level of understanding and curiosity and a willingness to see past their own needs. Okay, that's all. You just have to find people that exist in that space of giving a damn about people beyond just what they see on the surface and also giving a damn about people beyond just what their needs are specifically. Okay. That's it. That's it. You just have to find people that are selfless and people that, you know, obviously have healthy boundaries, but people that care about you outside of their convenience. Okay. People that make time for the relationship, not just use it as a buffer. Oh, when I have time versus let me make time. Okay, and then if you find yourself constantly in these dynamics where you are the one that's, you know, making time and it's not really reciprocated, then that's an opportunity to change. Because one thing I've also understood is that the significance of who you are is probably bigger than what you realize. All right. I had that pointed out to me earlier this week. <laughs> you know, it's it's so funny. Sometimes we think that how we show up. It doesn't matter and it doesn't have impact on people because the people that we're hoping to be uh, 
seen by or valued by or respected by seem to be coming up short. But then there are other people who don't even know you that well that recognize how you make them feel and how you treat them. You're valued, right? You are definitely valued and you are a significant component in somebody's life, whether you realize it or not. And sometimes we may want to believe that we're insignificant because there's less responsibility there, right? If I don't believe that I'm that important of a person, I could kind of dip in and out of people's lives without responsibility of owning up to it, right? I can I can settle for not giving my best. I can criticize myself, right? I could downplay my work. I could do all of these things that minimize me and shrink me if I believe that I'm not significant. And that allows me to kind of live life under the radar, right? If I if I believe that I'm insignificant, then I won't have to try as hard. Or if I believe that I'm insignificant, the work that I do and as hard as I work to be a significant person, I could constantly downplay and reject, right? So I create this vicious cycle of rejection, <laughs> right? When When you finally accept how significant you are as a person is going to change some things. Okay. It's going to change how you see yourself It's going to change you being in situations and relationships where people seem to not see you, right? A lot of things are going to stop. Okay. And you're going to realize, well, maybe I have a little bit more responsibility than what I have uh, been willing to accept because it, it's responsibility there. Once you understand your significance and how important you just may be, there's responsibility there, right? And people will kind of call you out. <laughs> people will go looking for you. It is not so much about being needed, right? I don't think, um, I saw this other post. This was just a week of very interesting things. And it just lets me know that, you know, as a society, we're quiet about very big feelings, we're quiet about very big feelings, but someone had said, you know, being a people pleaser, a lot of times is not you wanting to be needed, is is you wanting to feel wanted. Is you just wanting to feel like you matter. You don't want people to need you, right? Who wants that? Some people do want it, right? I myself don't want that. My desire is not to go through this world and have people who need me. I don't want that. I want you to need yourself. <laughs> and that's why I, I offer up this information and I talk about the things I talk about because it's like, when it's all said and done, after I finish recording this, I'm going on about my life because I have other things to move on to and I have other things to do and I'm going to be taking care of myself and, and my relationships, right? But even in my relationships, the goal is to not have them need me, right? We don't need to be needed. Feeling significant is important, but needing being needed, no, right? Because if you think you need someone, then you overlook your significance and your identity as an individual. You get me? So understand is like, do I want to be needed or do I want to be wanted? Do I want to feel significant? Is that what I'm lacking? And again, sometimes in this, this discourse of being single and in relationships, sometimes it feels like you're doing something wrong because you've made time for the people in your life and because they can't make time or they refuse to or they, they you know, they just don't prioritize the relationship as much. You now feel defective because you're willing to do that. Okay. It's all about perspective. It's all about intention. And again, it's all about empathy. And like I said, some people may not understand your experience because they've never had to ex experience it. They just might not get it, right? And they don't really try to get it. Um, you know, and I think sometimes being, being single, people may perceive you as like, oh, yeah, you you have the ability to do anything you want. And it's like, yeah, the things that I'm doing, I'm doing the things that I want. And I'm also making time for the relationships that are important to me. So yeah, you know, being single means that I have choice. But being in a relationship doesn't stop you from having that choice. You're just making a choice. We're always making choice. And someone's like, well, what about kids? What about children are a choice, right? In a grand scheme, children are a choice. And you have to ask yourself, well, why do you have children if they seem like such a burden for you? 
because that's a conversation people don't want to have either. It's like, well, why do you have children if, you know, the thing is like, oh, well, you don't have kids, so you wouldn't get it and all these other things. It's like, well, you know, maybe some people had to raise children while they were children, right? Maybe some people have already experienced what it's like to raise a child without having their own. You don't know that. But because somebody doesn't have a kid attached to them, the automatic perception is like, oh, yeah, you don't know what this life is like. Be willing to be curious about people and be willing to truly understand somebody's experience beyond what you just see. You're just seeing because I can guarantee you sometimes people are a lot more interesting than what they let on to. Right. A lot more interesting. A lot more interesting. And I think that's the hang up, too. It's like, you know, people don't have people don't take the time or make the time to get to know the people in their lives. Right. It's just kind of like, oh, you're here. You know, there have been, I, I know a lot more about people than they do about me sometimes. <laughs> I will honestly say that. I'm a curious person and I'm not an intrusive or nosy person either. It's like, I'm a curious person. Like, I want to get to know you. I want to understand you. Like, I want to explore who you are. I love that. I love getting to know people. And the reason why is because I get to pick up on things that are important or things that I value about this person without them even knowing that that's something that's like special, right? It's like a painting almost. It's like an abstract painting. If you really look at people, sometimes you got to tilt your head to see the full picture. Sometimes you got to take a step back. Sometimes you got to move a little closer, right? Sometimes you got to look past just that picture and kind of see into the details because there are hidden little images in there. You know, people are not necessarily just blank canvases. You know, there's depth. There's 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 palettes. There's different hues. Right. There's different textures. There's so much that's going on with another human. And if you yourself are an interesting human, you will find interest in the humans that you cultivate space with. Right. I don't always think I'm the most interesting person until I talk to someone <laughs> and they remind me. Right. Because this is what I do at my capacity. This is just who I am. So therefore, like I said, we don't always get to experience ourselves at the same capacity that other people do. We never will, unfortunately, right? You will never get to experience yourself the same way somebody else does. And sometimes that's a beautiful thing, right? Because now you have a mirror that gets to show back who you are as an individual. Relationships are relationships, y'all. And it's all about who a person is in their relationships of all kind. Their willingness to be there, their willingness to be present, Right, their willingness to be intentional, the willingness to prioritize. That's all it comes down to. Right? Being in a relationship doesn't necessarily change you. It brings out more of who you are. And like I said, being single doesn't make you less selfless, right? And being in a relationship doesn't make you less selfish. It just all depends on the person and their priorities. And you have to be around people who are willing to see you past their own convenience. Right. Who who check in, who make sure you're good, who make time for you. Right. It's not just these little blips on the radar. It's like, nah, I'm intentional about the time. I want to make time for you. I want to make space for this relationship for it to be nurtured and, and, and breathable. That's the goal. That's the goal. And be honest about who you are as a person, right? What are your demands? You know, why am I single? You know, what are my expectations of my my other relationships? And never feel bad about wanting to connect and have have deeper bonds with people. That's that's something you shouldn't feel guilty about. It's just a matter of who you're seeking it from. And if somebody is constantly making you feel like it's it's uh, it's an ask. Like it's a task to develop a deeper bond with them, then maybe those aren't your people. And that's okay, right? There are a billion people in the world, and a lot of them are obviously experiencing the same level of loneliness of some capacity. But um, you have choice. There are other people out there who would probably 
kill to have a friend like you or kill to have someone like you in their lives, even as, as a significant other, okay? And then the question is like, well, how do you find each other? Well, look on social media. It just comes down to your willingness, <laughs> your willingness to connect with people and other people willing to connect with you because everybody's kind of crying out for the same thing. It's just a matter of, right, all right, cool, what am I going to do now? Because that comment section on that video is, is large, right? And it just lets us know that, again, there are very big feelings that are being minimized. But now it comes down to what effort are you willing to make? And sometimes, truth be told, it's like some people just want to vent. I understand that. Some people just want to vent and they're not looking for a solution. And then the idea of relationships as a whole can be scary, depending on what your past looks like. But again, intention matters and we have to be what we seek. And it all comes down to what kind of person are you willing to be and what kind of person are you expecting to be on a receptive end? All right. I hope you guys take care of yourselves and I hope you guys take care of the relationships that are important to you. <laughs> I hope you guys take care of each other when it's all said and done. Um, yeah, if you like the podcast, rate and review, leave a comment, let the people know what you like. Uh, I might talk more about relationships moving forward, especially since Valentine's Day. It's, it's the month of love or heartbreak, depending on <laughs> where you are. Um, but yeah, if you like the podcast, leave a rating or review. If you want to book uh, coaching session, sign up for coaching and, and work with me through some things. I'm down. I'm accepting new clients. And uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, if you want to become a patron or Apple subscriber, you get bonus content, ad free episodes. You get early access to these episodes. And if you want to get some merch, the link is also in the bio, too. I think that's about it, guys. I think that's about it. But yeah, you know. Just appreciate the people in your lives. It's not complicated. Right? It's only complicated when you're not honest about your priorities and whether or not you value the relationship as much as you say you do. <laughs> That's all. Alright? Take care of yourselves, yeah? Take care of each other. Take life.